Known for his lasting influence on the movie world, Anthony Hopkins is a symbol of great acting. What makes him special are the timeless qualities he brings to his roles, making people all over the world remember him forever. There are interesting facts and stories about him that not many people know, adding more depth to his career. As we explore his life, we'll find lots of funny, surprising, and touching moments. Share your favorite memories or experiences with him in the comments below. We're excited to hear them. Now, let's dive into Anthony Hopkins' life and career. Get ready for a mix of emotions as we uncover the different sides of this classic actor. Stay tuned for more surprises ahead. In the world of acting, few actors have made as big an impact as Anthony Hopkins. He's known for his incredible talent and dedication to his craft, which has spanned many years and left a lasting impression on movies. Born in Wales, Hopkins started acting passionately and quickly gained recognition for his skills on stage and screen. He's famous for playing a wide range of characters, from the mysterious Hannibal Lecter to the respected Sir Anthony Eden, always bringing depth and authenticity to his roles. Hopkins has won many awards, including Oscars and Golden Globes, but his real legacy lies in the emotions he brings out in audiences and the stories he tells on screen. He's a towering figure in cinema, inspiring people all over the world with his work. In short, Anthony Hopkins is a master of acting whose performances continue to captivate audiences everywhere. Sir Anthony Hopkins, known for his impressive performances, successfully quit smoking using the Alan Carr method. His commitment to a healthier lifestyle reflects determination and discipline. In The Remains of the Day, directed by James Ivory, he portrayed the character Stevens. The film, set in an English country house before and after World War II, explores a complicated dynamic. The butler, Stevens, grapples with loyalty to his questionable master, Lord Darlington, and develops unspoken feelings for the housekeeper, Miss Kenton. The movie came to fruition through a collaboration between Merchant Ivory Productions and Mike Nichols, with Hopkins delivering a compelling performance. The journey from novel to screen was marked by twists, with Nichols initially involved, later replaced by Christopher Minall, before ultimately Merchant Ivory took charge. Hopkins also starred as Henry Wilcox in Howard's End, another collaboration with Merchant Ivory Productions. This film, one of four featuring him, and the production company showcased their successful partnership. The quartet of projects, including The Remains of the Day, Surviving Picasso, and The City of Your Final Destination, highlighted the synergy between him and Merchant Ivory. These collaborations underscored his ability to bring depth and authenticity to roles, contributing significantly to the success of these films. His performances and commitment to the craft shine through in these cinematic endeavors, leaving a lasting impression on audiences. In The Bounty, Sir Anthony Hopkins took on the role of Lieutenant William Blake. Critics of the on-screen punishment may find fault, but historians argue that Blake's disciplinary actions were comparatively milder than those of many of his peers. In A Bridge Too Far, he portrayed Lieutenant Colonel Frost. Notably, key figures from Operation Market Garden, including John Frost, served as military advisors during the film's production. This collaboration with historical consultants added authenticity to the portrayal of events. In The Lion in Winter, Hopkins played the character Richard. During filming, Catherine Hepburn, featured in a Turner Classic Movies segment, shared practical advice with him, don't act. Just say the lines. This guidance proved valuable, reflecting Hepburn's straightforward approach to the craft. Throughout these roles, he demonstrated his ability to embody diverse characters and engage in historical narratives. His experiences on set, such as the advice from Hepburn, provide insights into his pragmatic approach to acting. In The Bounty, Anthony Hopkins portrayed Lieutenant William Blake, a role praised by Mel Gibson. Gibson expressed the belief that the movie's revisionism fell short, feeling his character should have been depicted as the antagonist. Despite this, he commended Hopkins' performance as the film's standout aspect. Hopkins took on the role of Pablo Picasso, a notable portrayal, while his friend and frequent collaborator Richard Attenborough avidly collected Picasso's artwork. In Bram Stoker's Dracula, Hopkins opted for the character Professor Van Helsing. This choice followed his success as Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs. Hopkins aimed to select a role vastly different from Lecter, showcasing his versatility as an actor. These instances reflect Hopkins' ability to immerse himself in diverse roles, earning acclaim from peers and audiences alike. In the film Nixon, he played the role of Richard M. Nixon alongside Kevin Dunn and David Paymer. He and Dunn previously appeared together in Chaplin, where Dunn portrayed J. Edgar Hoover. Later, they both reunited in Amistad, where he once again portrayed a former U.S. president. 
Dunn, and Pamer also starred in movies featuring fictional Presidents Dave and The American President. In QB Roman 7, he portrayed Adam Kelno. Despite the character's last name being Kelno, he was once mistakenly referred to as Dr. Kellogg. Interestingly, he later portrayed Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, the inventor of breakfast cereal and the road to Wellville. At 17, he dropped out of school. Anthony Hopkins, known for his role as Dr. Frederick Treves in The Elephant Man, has had a notable career. He received his Academy Award for The Silence of the Lambs 11 years after his father's passing. Interestingly, Hopkins reads each script aloud 250 times before filming, and to keep his memory sharp, he memorizes one new poem every week. In The Elephant Man, there's a scene where he's led down a dark corridor, which echoes a suspenseful moment similar to that in The Silence of the Lambs, where Jodie Foster's character is led to him. It's a fascinating connection between two of his iconic roles. Anthony Hopkins, known for his impressive acting career, attended Cowbridge Boys Grammar School during his youth. His early education set the stage for a remarkable journey in the world of drama. In the film A Bridge Too Far, he played the character of Lieutenant Colonel Frost. An interesting story from the DVD edition reveals a moment during filming when the real-life Colonel John Frost corrected him. During the depiction of the battle for Arnhem, Frost expressed disapproval of him running from house to house. According to Frost, a British officer would have shown disdain for enemy fire by walking calmly instead. Despite his efforts to follow this advice, instincts prevailed, and he found himself running when faced with gunfire. In recognition of his significant impact on drama, he was appointed a commander of the most excellent order of the British Empire in the 1987 Queen's Birthday Honors List. His journey from Cowbridge Boys Grammar School to receiving the prestigious honor of CBE reflects his commitment to acting and his ability to bring characters to life on the screen. These experiences highlight not only his skill as an actor, but also the challenges faced and lessons learned throughout his career. Anthony Hopkins displayed a wide range of characters in his career, showcasing his versatility as an actor. In Bram Stoker's Dracula, he portrayed Professor Abraham Van Helsing, his third Doctor role following The Silence of the Lambs and The Elephant Man. Notably in Dracula, the character gives lectures in a grand Victorian auditorium reminiscent of The Elephant Man. In the movie Free Jack, he played the character Ian McCandless, but later expressed dissatisfaction, calling the film terrible in interviews. Another significant role was William Parrish in Meet Joe Black. However, a shorter version was created for television and airlines with many business scenes removed. This led to the producer and director Martin Brest disowning the edited version, resulting in the director's credit being attributed to Alan Smithy. Hopkins' versatility shines through in these varied roles, demonstrating his ability to inhabit characters across different genres and narratives. In The Remains of the Day, Stevens was played by Anthony Hopkins. Neither the filmmakers nor Hopkins had experience with English country house operations or a butler's life. Kazuo Ishiguro, the author of the novel, had to learn about it while writing. Hopkins feared making mistakes and requested an experienced butler, Cyril Dickman, from Queen Elizabeth II staff to advise. Dickman brought others experienced in household operations. There was a strict hierarchy from butlers to scullery boys and gamekeepers with each having specific tasks. The bounty was supposed to be made in 1975, closer to Hopkins' age as William Blake. He portrayed various historical figures in films, including presidents, writers, and military leaders. Some of his characters include Alfred Hitchcock, Richard Nixon, and C.S. Lewis. Anthony Hopkins portrayed the infamous Dr. Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs. Interestingly, six years prior, in 1985, he delivered the line quid pro quo in the TV movie Guilty Conscience. During his preparation for the role of Lecter, he incorporated unique elements, such as modeling Lecter's voice after Catherine Hepburn's cutting warble and adopting a habit of rarely blinking, inspired by watching tapes of Charles Manson. In Howard's End, he played Henry Wilcox. Notably, both he and Samuel West, who portrayed Leonard Bast, had previously taken on the role of Siegfried Farnon in different adaptations of all creatures great and small. Hopkins starred in the 1975 film, while West appeared in the 2020 series remake. Known for his diverse roles in various films, Anthony Hopkins showcases his acting prowess. In The Remains of the Day, he portrayed James Stevens, a character originally envisioned differently in Kazuo Ishiguro's source novel. The new employer, Faraday, was an American, distinct from the Senator Jack Lewis in the movie. In Howard's End, Hopkins played Henry Wilcox alongside Oscar winners Emma Thompson and Vanessa Redgrave, as well as Oscar nominee Helena Bonham Carter. 
In the bounty, he took on the role of Lieutenant William Blick. Director Roger Donaldson faced disagreements with him over the latter's performance during the film's production. Demonstrating the ability to immerse himself in diverse characters across genres, Hopkins significantly contributed to the success of these films. Despite occasional clashes with directors, his commitment to the craft remains evident. In the movie The Edge, Anthony Hopkins played the character Charles Morse. Throughout the film, Alec Baldwin repeatedly mentions the name Charles, referring to Hopkins' character a total of 87 times. This notable repetition emphasizes Hopkins' character's significance in the storyline. In the historical drama Amistad, Hopkins took on the role of John Quincy Adams. Interestingly, several other actors from the film, including Anna Paquin, Stellan Skarsgård, Jimin Hounsou, and Chiwetelu Giafer, later appeared in movies based on Marvel comics. This connection highlights the diverse paths taken by the cast members within the entertainment industry. In The Mask of Zorro, Hopkins portrayed Don Diego de la Vega. Notably, Hopkins and Catherine Zeta-Jones, who played father and daughter in the film, were the only Welsh performers in the cast. This shared Welsh background adds a unique element to their on-screen relationship, reinforcing the familial connection portrayed in the movie. These instances showcase Hopkins' versatility in taking on diverse roles, from an intellectual adventurer to a historical figure and a masked hero's father. The repetition of certain elements, such as character names, serves to underscore their importance in each respective narrative. In the world of movies, Sir Anthony Hopkins stands out for his powerful acting. In The Remains of the Day, he played Stevens, the butler at Darlington Hall, who stays distant, saying, It's none of my business, sir, to know. My business is to serve. This shows his talent for portraying complex characters with simplicity. In The Silence of the Lambs, he was Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Hopkins suggested looking directly at the camera in one scene, adding a chilling touch to Lecter's character. Hopkins also played former British Prime Minister David Lloyd George twice, first in Young Winston and later in The Edwardians. This shows how he can bring historical figures to life in a compelling way. Overall, he's known for creating memorable characters like Stevens, Dr. Lecter, and David Lloyd George. His performances leave a strong impression on audiences. Anthony Hopkins, a well-known actor, spent nearly 10 years in the United States starting in the mid-1970s. During this period, he made a big impact on the entertainment industry with his outstanding performances. In 1993, he played Lieutenant William Blig in the movie The Bounty, showing his versatility and talent. Interestingly, in the same year, there was a unique moment in the film industry when three lead actors from different movies were nominated for the Best Actor Oscar Hopkins for The Remains of the Day, Liam Neeson for Skyler's List, and Daniel Day-Lewis for In the Name of the Father. This highlighted the incredible talent and depth of performances in movies at that time. Moreover, there were times when Hopkins had the chance to take on roles that could have changed the direction of his career. One notable example was when he turned down the role of Alfred Pennyworth in Batman Begins in 25. Such decisions often show an actor's careful consideration of roles and a desire to pursue projects that match their artistic vision. Throughout his impressive career, he has held audiences' attention with his strong presence and ability to bring characters to life on screen. His impact on the world of cinema has left a lasting impression, earning him widespread praise and numerous awards. Indeed, Anthony Hopkins' reputation as an actor continues to inspire generations of performers and filmmakers, showcasing the lasting power of his craft. This story provides a glimpse into the very journey of a Hollywood legend whose name will always be linked with excellence in acting. Anthony Hopkins portrayed Dr. Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs. When Claris first meets him, he mentions his drawing is of the Duomo scene from The Belvedere. Belvedere, Ohio, is the hometown of Buffalo Bill's first victim, Frederick Abimel. Sir Anthony Hopkins saw the film as a last-ditch effort to break out in Hollywood. He had been acting since the 1960s, but hadn't reached a list status. If the film hadn't given him the boost he wanted, he would have quit acting in Hollywood and focused on the British stage. But the film was a hit, making him a household name. His performance earned him his first Academy Award nomination, which he won, launching him into a list status. He has since received five more Academy Award nominations and won another for The Father. In A Bridge Too Far, he played Lieutenant Colonel Frost. He later appeared in The Bounty with Edward Fox and Lawrence Olivier. 